Hi guys! Welcome back to this channel. I'm Teacher Sam, your online learning buddy. Now that you have learned how to write the theoretical and conceptual framework of your study, let's move to another section in Chapter 1, which is the SOP or Statement of the Problem. Other researchers call it a problem statement, while others call it research questions. Some students found it too difficult to frame the problem statements. Some researchers also find it the hardest part of the research process. This is really true if you do not know what the study is all about. But as I mentioned in my video on the tips on developing research titles, it is really difficult to come up with a problem statement if you do not know anything about your study. That is why it is important to choose a topic that you are interested in. Others who have knowledge or background information about their studies are still facing difficulty. Why is that so? It's because they do not know how to formulate research questions. So, if you want to learn how to formulate the research questions or problems for your study, then continue watching this video. So, what to expect? Today, you will learn the definition of a statement of the problem, things to consider in formulating the research questions or problems, the general and specific research problems, types of research questions or problems and an example of a statement of the problem. First, let's define what a research question, problem statement, or statement of the problem is. A statement of the problem is used in research work as a claim that outlines the problem addressed by a study. In most studies, the research question is written so that it outlines various aspects of the study, including the population and variables to be studied and the problem the study addresses. The statement of the problem briefly answers the question, what is the problem that the research will address? Your research problem is the gap in existing knowledge you want to address, an issue with a certain process, for example, voter registration, or practices, for example, patient treatment, that is well-known and well-documented but needs a solution, or earlier findings that point to the need for further investigation. Ano ba yung research gap? Ang research gap ay tanong or problema na hindi pa nasa ng mga existing studies or research within the particular field. There is a gap if merong mga bagong idea or concept na hindi pa masyadong napag-aralan. Sometimes you'll find a research gap if the existing research is outdated. Halimbawa, nakandak siya pero matagal na. For instance, nakandak during 2000 to 2010 and in need of new or updated research. Katulad halimbawa ng mga studies on internet use in 2001. Or perhaps a specific population has not been well studied. There are plenty of studies on teenagers and video games but not enough studies on toddlers and video games. These are just a few examples but any research gap you find is an area where more studies and more research need to be conducted. Formulation of research problem is the first and important step of research process. It is like the identification of a destination before undertaking a journey. Here are the things to consider in formulating your research questions or problems. First, your research questions would depend on the type of research study. Before writing the research questions or problems, be sure to know if your research study is correlational, experimental, descriptive, etc. The way you frame your questions and how many questions there are depends on the type of research. Second, the SOP clearly identifies the purpose and direction of the research project you will propose. Research questions state what you want to accomplish or achieve in your study. A research problem is like the foundation of the building. The type and design of the building are dependent upon the foundation. If the foundation is well designed and strong, you can expect the building to be too. The research problem is the foundation of research study. If it is well formulated, a good study will follow. Here's a tip. If you are a budding researcher, choose correlational research. Third, the problems should be relevant and manageable. It is very important important to include only words or terms that are relevant to the topic. Including unnecessary terms may mislead you or take you off topic. So don't just ask whatever questions you want. Be sure they are relevant and they are necessary. So here's a tip. Ask yourself, what is it that I want to find out about in this study? You should make a list of whatever questions come to your mind relating to your research study. And if you think there are too many to be manageable, go through the process of elimination. Choose research questions na kaya mo lang sagutan kasi ikaw din ang mahirapan once approved na yan. 
The research questions are the basis in writing for the results and discussion. So limit your research questions kasi the more research questions, the more to present, discuss, and analyze in Chapter 4. Any question that we want answered and any assumption or assertion that we want to challenge or investigate can become a research problem or research topic for our study. However, it is important to remember that hindi lahat ng questions can be transformed into research problems and some may prove to be extremely difficult to study. Kaya malagang i-consider ang mga sumusunod. Interest, level of expertise, relevance, availability of data, and ethical issues. Out of these Five, itong availability of data and ethical issue ang critical kasi kahit pa interest mo yan within your expertise at relevance sa study mo pero kung mahirapan kang i-access ang data or information na kailangan mo or meron kang ethical issues like mga menor de edad ang respondents or participants mo or highly controversial ang issue baka mahirapan kang i-push through ang study kasi wala kang access sa mga information or data na needed mo. Thus, it's very important to consider these things. Then assess your research question or problems. Importante malaman mo kung feasible bang yung mga na-formulate na research questions or problems. Consider them in the light of the time, resources, or yung tinatawag nating financial and human and technical expertise at your disposal. Be clear and specific in your research questions or problems. The SOP has two parts, the general research problem and the specific research problem. What is a general research problem? This is the opening statement in your SOP that is usually based Based on your research title. Taking this correlational research as an example, which is titled Anxiety in Second Language and Student Speaking Performance, Their Relationship. In this title, we could have this general research problem. This study aims to determine the relationship between language anxiety and student speaking performance among third-year college students from the College of Arts and Sciences at Rizal State University who are enrolled during the first semester of the academic year 2021-2022. The second part of the SOP ay ang mga specific problems. Unlike general problems which are formulated in statement form, specific problems are in question form. So our specific questions are written in the following manner. What is the profile of the respondents in terms of 1.1 age, 1.2 gender, 1.3 educational qualification, 1.4 marital status, 1.5 salary, and 1.6 college? This is called a factor isolating question. How does texting influence the writing performance of the students in English courses? This is an example of a factor relating question. What are the effects of online games on the study habits of junior high school students? This is an example of a situation relating question. Based on the findings, what policy may be formulated to increase the participation of women in sports activities? This is an example of a situation producing question. Don't forget to base the specific research problems on the schematic diagram of the study which is found in your conceptual framework. In most educational research, researchers formulate specific research problems by writing a question about the profile of the respondents, though profiling is not required in all research. For example, what is the profile of the respondents in terms of age, gender, educational background, length of service, and religious affiliation? Then write a question about the independent variable. In this title, the independent variable is personality traits. For example, what is the level of respondents' personality traits in terms of extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness? Next, develop a question about the dependent variable. In this title, the dependent variable is work-related attitudes. For example, what is the level of work-related attitudes of the respondents in terms of job involvement and organizational commitment? Also, formulate a question on the significant relationship between the independent variable and dependent variable. For example, is there a significant relationship between the personality traits and work-related attitudes of the respondents? Then you may formulate also a situation-producing question that will yield the output of the study. But please be reminded that this is not required in all SUCs. For example, what training program may be developed based on the findings of the study? Again, in formulating specific research questions, always look at your conceptual framework and consider all the variables of the study. 
Taking this correlational research which is titled Gender Equity Landscape in Higher Education Effects of Organizational Practices to Teachers Morale and Productivity In this title, our general research problem is The purpose of this study is to determine the effects of gender equity organizational practices on teachers' morale and productivity during the academic year 2021-2022 Now you notice na meron tayong one independent variable which is the organizational practices and two dependent variables which are teachers morale and productivity ideally the more variables you have the more research questions you have to formulate but then again nasa sa inyo kung ano ang relevant feasible and manageable na research questions and depende yan sa approval ng panelist mo so our specific research problems are the following In this title, Bagatrix Effects on Students' Performance, our general research problem is the study aims to determine the effects of Bagatrix on the performance of the grade 11 students in probability and statistics at Manuka National High School, Manuka Zamboanga del Norte, during the school year 2017-2018. Dito pa lang sa general statement, maglagay ka na ng scope and limitations. You notice na sa title natin walang grade level, course title, name of school, location of the school, and period. Kasi nga on the tips on writing good research title, meron tayong ideal na number of words sa ating title. At isa pa, it is more fitting to write this information here in the problem statement and in the scope and limitation sections. The second part of the SOP ay yung specific problems ng study. These are stated in question form. Unlike general problems that are stated in statement form, specific research problems are stated in this manner. Specifically, this study will answer the following questions. So that's it. Just stick within your research title. Do not formulate questions that are irrelevant. Also, don't forget to ask for the assistance of your advisor, research enthusiast, or someone who has been into writing and publishing research. And I hope that you can formulate the research questions of your study. Good luck and I hope you learned something from this video. If you are new in this channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell for you to be notified for my next uploads. See you in my next video. Happy e-learning!